This episode is brought to you by our friends at B of Goodrich. Check them out using the link in the description below. Previously on For a Few Bucks Less. Looks to me like you bought a Ford. No, I bought a very reliable Japanese pickup. What? <laughs> Nathan! I, at first I thought that it was an S10. You pulled in. Uh, it's a Blazer? Really? Dude, you bought a Ford. Yeah, bring it up a little closer if you can. And the transmission is still there. Come on, G. I'm beating him. I'm still beating him. Hey! It smells like a Reno strip club is what it smells like. Okay, there's a little bit of cigarette and shame, but it's okay because yeah. that whole thing Helps with the ambience. Gotcha. <laughs> and, and since when have you been to a Reno strip? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to episode two of For a Few Bucks Less, and we are here at our master mechanic's Toby's place where we're about to find out just how much of a piece of, what would you call it, Nathan? Art, art. Art, piece of art that we all bought. So uh, Nathan's blazer is going in first, and we will see if it's worth uh, the two and a half thousand that we almost paid for it. Now Toby's a real expert with anything with four wheels and he specializes in German cars but he works on everything which is pretty cool, right? Anything. I said that right? All those kind of four wheels. Yeah. Alright, that's yeah. good to hear. So four wheels. This is Nathan's vehicle. Let's see who bought the dumpiest of the trio. So what are your initial things? What are you seeing and smelling? First things first, didn't seem like the AC was blowing the coldest. I don't know what his thought was on that. Someone put a brand new blower motor in it. You can see that's brand new and shiny. So that's, you know, that's good for him. Looks like we got a cheap O'Reilly's battery from not too old. The radiator's actually been replaced. You can see how nice and clean it is and shiny the fittings are. Nice. So it's got a new radiator in it. Looks like the drive belt's a little old and dry cracked, but not, you know, gonna break or anything tomorrow. Good. But you know, Colorado's just really dry on everything. Just make sure and Tommy's not like pulling any. Did you pull any of the tubes? Yeah, I'm pulling. I'm pulling. We're just the... connecting stuff, <laughs> and then we're adding a chip as well. Okay, that chip is all I need. This is interesting. That that, that is that's factory. Mm, is that cool. factory? That, that, that's that's, uh, that's um aftermarket factory <laughs> or whatever they call that. Okay. The, 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 don't push too hard or else it'll go in there it's hard to get out. The yellow condom and the windshield squirter reservoir. If you think that's what a condom acts, okay. So <laughs> the point is, is that um, there is one minor leak, but otherwise I, it runs really good. I was just mentioning you have a few new parts on it too. Yeah, you, have yeah, this, you have a new blower motor. It looks like the alternator new isn't battery. that ancient. And oh, the, you know. It, it look, look, look at the last build up. Man. Oh, okay, it is right. It's old. That's nice. Is that my pump for my uh, squirter? Yeah, in my book, that's probably going to, yeah, yeah, that's... Tommy, I know you did that. <laughs> uh huh. Well, you got two of them, so it might be the, for the back window, to tell you the truth. Actually, the back window is the only Yeah, no, squirt. oh, there you go, yeah. See, someone got a nice hose clamp on there that's about ten times too big. Yeah. Uh-huh, and it did, didn't quite hold up to, to staying where it belongs. Oh, gotcha. So, well, we can get a nice squeeze clamp on there if you want. That way it doesn't come back off. That's awesome. What's, mm -hmm. up with, what's up with the ball there? It, that's is, supposed to be, that's yeah, a vacuum. The vacuum uh, reservoir, little baby one. Really? Yeah, it holds vacuum, because some right. vehicles need extras. Well, they needed a place to put it, and they're running out of engine space well, here. Citrons have that, basically. So, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's the last thing you said. Yeah, that's some good condition fluid. <laughs> I've seen some really nice condition. And Yay! Yeah, it's, it needs to be a flushed like yesterday. It's, uh, it's brown, Nathan, is, is the way to describe that. It's all heated, you know. It's not black. It's well, <laughs> it's on its way. It's on its way. Yeah, okay. it, it needs about, you know, about a good little a little quarter to some brake fluid ran through and bled, bled through the system and it right. should be happy. Okay. Right. <laughs> hmm. Are you tie rods? Uh, something's loose, yeah. It looks like the front brakes are getting pretty low here. Well, you got a leak up front here that definitely looks like someone has a clamp on an oil cooler hose. So that's probably leaking. Actually, it's a good thing. It's, it's not a seal so far. Hmm, interesting. We have an aftermarket bracket welded here to this 
subframe. Why did they do that? Mm, you know, I'm guessing that this got bent so bad one time they had to actually fix it because if you look at this side, you can tell how original and factory it looks. Oh, yeah. And then you go to this side and you see how cobbled and thin with the metal. The metal's thin here, this bracket. This probably got ripped right off of here at one point. And that's holding on the control arm. Oh, the control arm, the whole front end. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, so that's, you know. Very exciting. Someone did a nice little fix, a little backyard bush fix, you know. I see good welds, so that makes me feel good about it. You know, you got some nice beads though, but I don't know why they decided to put this on there unless they had to use this to pull with, you know, a come along or something to, to get it all to line up just right so you get the camber cast to alignment. Interesting. Which makes me, you know, worried about the alignment on this side, tell you the truth, you okay. know. But this tire looks pretty decent as long as this was the tire from this side. It's leaking multiple locations. I mean, multiple. Oil from everywhere. <laughs> We're talking oil Cooler lines look like they're bad. Oil filter housing looks like it's leaking oil. It needs a gasket. We're talking back here, the oil pan and the rear main seal. Oh, it's, that's what I was worried about. It's just dumping oil like, you know, the... Whew. I don't know. <laughs> you got any shares in Exxon Mobil? Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're, I do have extra cases of oil. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're... Uh... Keep an eye on that dipstick, please. So oh, that, yeah. Every, every two or three days. And this one. Under here, uh huh. But what's going on there with the? Oh, uh, that's you know what we call uh, someone's butchcraft. That's not factory. So basically, you had a rear main leak, and someone decided to wipe some what RTV on there. They something? figured it would stop the leak. Interesting. Even though it's leaking internally, and it's just gonna fill it up into a nice little lake inside there, and then come out. Usually it's supposed to be a hole to the flywheel. Yes, but there's supposed to be a cover, so oh, that's okay. usually access to the flywheel, your inspection plate. Yeah, it looks like the front brakes are about 20%, but the road is awfully rusted. Looks like they've been at the bottom of the Lake Michigan for a while. Someone replaced the front shocks on there. I can give you that kind of good news. Yeah, that outer tie rod has a little bit of play in it. Not severely dangerous or nothing yet, but it's going to be. Ooh, this tie rod is very loose. That one definitely, I would definitely do that inner tie rod on this side. It's, okay. it's starting to get loose to be dangerous. All right. I'm just going to move that guy. This one's a little bit loose. So eventually, really, it would need all four inner and outer tie rods to fix it right, but this inner one's dangerously... Particularly bad, okay. Yeah, on, on its way, you know, to where I would say... It's time to do it. You know, another month from now, it's going to be a... I'm watching for you coming on at me. When I see you on Broadway, I'm getting off the side of the road. Keep moving down the line. He actually, the key case looks pretty good. That's the one thing I'm liking. Throw a few pinholes in there for him so it flows better. Ooh, it even has a real sway rod. This is a high performance vehicle you brought in today, so <laughs> extra stabilization. Oh, look at that bump stop. That's just in case he happens to hit a big obstacle. She'll do the job. Well, Toby, the rear end looks pretty good. Oh, and the shocks are new in the back as well. Yeah. I mean, well, there's no leakage. A lot less. Yeah, a lot less things actually go wrong in the back of most vehicles. Got a little play on this wheel bone back here. Definitely don't like that. That one's got a tad bit. A little bit's normal. That one's got a little bit more than it should have. Yeah, it's got a little patina rust going on, but it's not necessarily very deep. A lot of it's mostly surfaced. Oh, nice. The fill plug looks like no one's ever been in the fill plug on this rear differential. I don't even know how much goo is built up on it, but there's a plug somewhere. Somewhere there. I think overall, should make it from A to B for a while. I, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I, I feel better about this than the ramp. All right, so pretty big oil leaks in the front. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps tie rods, mm -hmm. and then rear diff service. Mm -hmm. And what else? What would the other front big? Front brakes would be coming up soon. Okay. Really rusted rotors, so they might squeak a little bit until they're done. But they do have a little life left. Okay. On another oil change or so. Tires, of course. Safety, and then after that. Just got to get it to the car wash, give it a good bath to see what's going on with these leaks, and that's how you'll know how bad it's going to be. Okay, what I heard was tires, lots of oil inside, everything will be fine with brakes. Good bath. <laughs> Close? 
Just skip the inside bath. <laughs> yeah, skip. Go for the engine bay bath. En engine bay bath, yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes sir. I, I can do that. Yes, sir. So one of the uh, big advantages of coming to German Auto is you get to meet these little guys. We got Tigger's the big one, and the little one is Theodore, and he is the cutest little guy to exist on this planet. And they're buddies. What a machine right there. Toby, this is my machine. It's a $2,550 Grand Cherokee, and it immediately got a, grand, a check engine light on the way home. See, the problem is you're $50 over budget. Exactly. So that's why you got a light. Penalty Bad karma, right bam. <laughs> Nothing we can't reset. Hopefully it'll stay off for you. That's funny. Heated seats. That's luxury right there. Leather, heated. Oh, yeah. Got all the goods. V8 motor. It's cruise control. It's got the real e-brake, too, so you can do some skids. I'm Two, liking it. 226,000 gentle miles, I'm sure. Gentle? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grandma only drove to church on Sunday. Whew, she's a little hot under there. Wadra, or sorry, power tech, baby. Yeah, 47 liter. That V8 under the hood. Ooh, the drive belt's looking good on this unit. That's nice. And power steering fluid's looking okay. Good. So I'm going to put this hose and hose clamp kind of on the very edge of the the neck of the radiator and I don't like that. You can see how much it should have been put up. Oh. This whole hose should go this way. Yeah, yeah, and down here in the bottom it's actually angled too. So that's... That's ripe to fall off. Yeah, it's a little, it's really hot right now too so I don't want to touch it much. Yeah, another one that needs a good brake fluid flush. It's definitely seen better days. Gotcha. It's not quite to that black state but it's, it's, getting, it's, get, it's getting there. Someone's done a little bit of splicing and dicing. Okay. In the injectors at one point, the injector wires on the thing, I can tell, put some tape on them and different stuff. Interesting. Some of these had bad wiring gone to some of the engine components on some of these. Doesn't look terrible in there. Overflow. Good. Anyone in, in, look at your engine oil and see how she's looking or no? Yeah, sure, why not? Looks like honey in there. Trans above it. Yes, it is, sir. I was like to at least look at the color and see what's looking like in there, too. And that tells you a good story on maintenance. And that's looking actually pretty clean, too. Usually, when they get bad, you'll see black and it starts turning discoloring. And it smells good, actually. They get boned and it smells really, really terrible. Okay, interesting. It smells a little terrible when a boned transmission comes in. He's a top tip right there. Nice. Right, someone just did the front brakes on it. You can see the rotors are actually really good. They have a little bit of rust buildup on them, but they're really flat, no grooves on them, and the brake pads have a lot of life on them. Got a little buildup on this front shock. You can see a little bit of fluid actually leaking out of it. So it's going to need front shocks eventually. Okay. Feeling a lot tighter than that blazer did, I can tell you that. Sweet. You have some old residue, definitely some. Some leaks have probably been fixed on the thing throughout the years. Okay. I would give this one a nice little bath as well, get it cleaned up so you can keep an eye on it. But overall, the dryness wise, we're talking a whole lot better. I do not like that. I see a little bit of a buildup of coolant right there on that. That thermostat housing, it looks like, probably plastic. But there's just a tad bit of buildup of coolant. So. That's something to definitely keep an eye on. Okay. Make sure you don't have any puddles in the ground and keep an eye on the temp gauge. Yep. Looks like the engine mounts in this unit have seen better days. You can see they're actually collapsed. So if the engine's sitting lower than it should in that rubber one. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. really cracked around the edges of that rubber mount. So that's how I know the motor mounts are sagged as the whole motor sitting lower than it should. And, right on. And they're dry cracked. And some small leaks off the back of the motor. Nothing to be concerned with. CV boot. It looks like someone just put a brand new CV axle in it. You can see how nice the boot is. That's that's good. Good money someone spent. We'll give it the old tie rod check and the old <laughs> ball joint check. Oh my gosh, that's a very dangerous. So this one you can see this is goes up to the steering box. The shot. The shot. Like another out of tie rod. See what she looks like. Tight. All right. And one more up here at the steering box. 
yeah. shop. So at very least you're going to have to get the steering box and that outer tie rod there and then go from there. Cool. But that's actually a lot better than I was expecting. With the mileage you have, nice. it's normal to have a whole front end that's loose or bad. So. Sick, okay, so that's not too no. big of a deal. No, I think you actually did pretty good on, on this car so far. Cats? Cats are not rattling and they seem pretty solid. Your joints seem to be tight in the front dry side shaft. Here you got some bushings that are starting to get a few cracks in it. And gotcha. Front locating trailing arms to the axle, but they're not dangerously loose yet. Yep. Um, they definitely just cracked a little bit. Back brakes look pretty good too. Look about 85% left on them. So much. Someone must have just went through all the brakes on this thing at some point. Sweet. Also shocks, right? Uh oh, -uh, they're you know, pretty old looking. <laughs> see the rubber looks all cracked on the bushing. Gotcha. And just you can see the rust build up, but. That one's not terrible, terrible. One other thing these Jeeps have, which is kind of weird, there's actually kind of a ball joint set up on this upper A arm for the axle. And I've seen those become issues on some at high mileage. Oh, right on, yeah, yeah. look at that. Overall, I think you did pretty good myself, Sick, Tommy. You know, dude. you got some bushings that are slowly cracked and a few other things, but, you know, overall, I think for the price, this is what you want to buy for that kind of money. Dude, what a machine, that's gotta be pricey. It's not the end of the world, but all the new technology, you, every few years, you basically have to keep your old stuff and upgrade to the new stuff and spend anywhere from five to 10 to 15,000, depending on what you want. Come on, are you serious? Well, if you do enough vehicles like I do, you have to have one that will do a little bit of everything. Wow. So, you know, in this case, you know, I'm not working on the Asian, European, USA, it just depends on what you're working on. So we don't want, oh, oh. High temperature operation is active. Okay. So it means the transmission probably got too hot at one point. Gotcha. And then it's got line pressure, low fault, line pressure fault. So that means the, the actual pressure of the transmission was a little low. And then the torque converter clutch code, which we know on, on that other one can be very bad. And an inadequate element of volume 24, which you know can mean a few things on these. Gotcha. So. so it's it's potential that it needs a transmission. Very potential that the transmission is messed up on this thing with that many codes. It scares me that this transmission, as long as it shifts good, yeah, and doesn't bang into gears and does not slip, that's the best you could look for. Gotcha. On something like this, when okay. you have these codes. Well, I mean, it does all that. We just gotta hope that it maintains doing all that. Now Andre's choice, a fake Ford Ranger. This is a Mazda B4000. Toby immediately not looking super happy. So what are you what are you noticing right off the bat, Toby? Did they have a squirrel up in the headliner? It looks like a <laughs> squirrel nest or something at one point. Headliner's falling down. And the wipers don't work. The wipers are stuck in the middle and I got nothing. And then I went to shift my shifter and this happened. <laughs> so. I just don't know how quality the build was on this unit. <laughs> Immediately, Andre should be disqualified from this competition because it's 60 shades of brown. It's too much brown. It looks like a turd. All right, Toby, so this is a four liter V6. It's Mazda, but it's obviously a Ranger underneath. So what are you seeing? I've seen the heads on these go bad, and I've actually done some head gaskets on a friend's Ford Ranger. Have you really? Oh yeah, so that's kind of a common problem they have with some of these is the heads having issues cracking or the gaskets going bad. So that's the only thing I can tell you instantly about these engines. Other than that, a lot of people do like them and seem to be fairly, fairly strong on every other which end that I've seen. Cool. Usually they have a weak four-wheel drive system. Interesting. And mainly if it's the electronic locking four-wheel drive system. Like this one. It's very, very, a little too complicated for its own good. We have a lot of splices going on here to the hoses, to the heater core. So we have one splice here, and there's another splice in the other one, so I'm wondering what they had going on at one point. Someone cut the hoses, maybe flushed the system, did something. Something's fishy. It's got an old, cool, old coolant crusties down there, old oil build up, and then, uh, and, and then when it doesn't have any of that stuff, you got rust and scaling and chunks of paint coming off. It doesn't look terrible. Almost looks like the pump was replaced at one point. Power steering? Yeah, squeezing me. 
is the, the reservoir that has a sticker on it, and that's how I know. Okay. Another culprit of some dirty brake fluid. Seems like you guys basically don't know how to find a car with good brake fluid from what I've seen. Well, that's one of our buying requirements. Uh -huh. It needs to have brake fluid. Uh-huh. To gotta give Toby something to do. Yeah, Toby's got us at least one. You gotta, you gotta give him some gravy once in a while. <laughs> Ooh, Lord, you see the big cracks in the fan blade? So that plastic fan blade right there has very big dry cracks in it. And that's dangerous because when they get bad enough like that, that plastic breaks into pieces and comes through the hood. Really? Dents the bottom of the hood from the inside out, takes out radiators. It's that bad, huh? Yeah, it's it's on its way. I would definitely recommend a new fan blade. Yeah, not terrible, terrible, but it's not just been changed. Definitely going to need an oil change before a nice trip in it, I can tell you that. Cool. It's like a Costco battery, Interstate Costco. Hold down's not doing much in it. Hmm. It's a little rusted out. Maybe it doesn't want to come out. Clutch fluid looks pretty good. Oh my god. Oh my. I thought I heard a. I was going to test drive this thing on the street because when I pulled it in, I heard some. And I was just doing like two miles an hour. I'm guessing it's probably this wheel bearing or something is loose in there. Basically, this one has a tad bit too, more than it should. And you see how bad these tires are cupped? The worst cup I've seen in a while. Low, high, low, high, low, high. You feel it's like blah, 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 blah. So you're driving down the road. Miles of ride on a horse. You definitely have a little bit of brake pad looking like. It's about like 20%. Oh my goodness. So if we look right here. Doesn't get it dangerouser than that. I don't know who drove this here, but God bless them. So it's not a wheel bearing. So Toby. you know the wheel bearing is going to be behind this dust shield here. So when you actually wiggle it, this knuckle is going to stay where it is and not move. The wheel bearing is going to be on the back side of that, which actually spins off the spindle. Okay. So when I wiggle it like that, and you see that, it's this ball joint right here that's literally about to snap in half. And it has more play than I've seen in a long time. And I believe the upper is bad as well because it's probably been basically riding on an upper ball joint to to keep it on the road. Holy smoker, that's a big oil leak. That's what we call a, either a big one for a long time or a little one for a long time. And you can see a lot of coolant crusties. Like I was saying, patina, you got coolant crusties coming down from water pump area. You got oil. And the first wet, wettest leak I see is the sensor right there, which is a one, one wire sensor for the oil, oil pressure sensor. Yeah. So those would be the first things I would do is be an oil pressure okay. sensor. And I would probably do a new water pump. You see that weird like, what was it, twin traction beam or twin I-beam yeah, front Yeah, twin I-beam, exactly. Just like uh, older, you know, Ford Ranger with pivots and all this. And these axle shafts go through the middle of it which looks like it's going to need a U-joint on eventually as well. It's not going to break or nothing, but there's a U-joint in inside of here that's really rusted and starting to get loose. It looks like someone's been in the clutch at some point. You can see how it's got the new hydraulics, and that's basically internal hydraulics for the clutch on this unit. Okay. So someone's actually been in there probably and done some of the hydraulics and probably a new clutch at some point. Well, that's good. I'm going to say not too, you know, long ago by the by the looks of it. It's looking a little, a little rusted. Got a few rattles. Got a few... Hmm. Extras. Nice muffler. <laughs> yeah, this whole exhaust is just a little bit all worn out. All those hangers are getting a little loose. And that's it. Mufflers getting rusted out a little bit, but nothing that's gonna, you know, cause it to break and be on the side of the road. The main concern for me is gonna be that right front. Overall, I don't know. I think she's she's seen she's seen a hard life somewhere. This unit begin its life with a cheap build and cheap parts and put together, and, and she's in, seen better days now. So Toby. All right, you've got a choice of the three. You got Nathan's Blazer, which is the Exxon Valdez. You've got the Jeep, which was pretty good, but has some pretty scary warnings for the transmission. 
or you've got the Mazda with the totally worn out front end. Which of the three is best and which is the worst? I would say the best for the price that was spent would have been the Jeep. Okay. Even though the transmission codes are there. Okay. Because the reason being is it still shifts and it doesn't slip and the transmission's still working at this time. Okay. And you also don't know how long those codes have been in the system. Right. So we clear the system, we have you test drive it and see how long it lasts, and time will tell nice. on that. But safety wise, I wouldn't even drive this one down Broadway. Okay. It's so bad. Gotcha. Second second off would be that, you know, Valdez because the oil leaks are so bad and the tires are dry rotted, you know, once those are fixed it'll be decent. So what you're telling me is it's it's a tie for last place. Um, eh. And then Mazda took it. Mazda's the worst? Mazda took it, unfortunately. Just because of the front end? The front end, the rust, and gotcha. some of the other issues I'm seeing. All right. The water pump and some of the other oil leaks. And right. And that was not paid for. I didn't even slip him his hundred bucks yet for telling me I won. So, Toby, thank you for inspecting these vehicles. This was a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. um, if it's okay with you, I'll probably leave this here. Uh, I would recommend it, please. All right, sounds good. And then we'll go from there. Next time on For a Few Bucks Less. So it looks like the former owner had some real problems with these uh, screws and they broke off here. Tommy, truth or dare? Oh, definitely dare. Nathan, truth or dare? Dare me, baby! Andre, truth or dare? I know my Mazda can do it! Don't like taking things with momentum, but with open diffs, you kinda gotta take some stuff with momentum. Sorry, uh, uh, my, my shifter came off in my hand. Come on! Come on! Run! 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 It stopped.